More than 20% of foreign agents in Russia are under criminal prosecution. Over the course of a year, their number has doubled. Today it was calculated by journalists of the publication Verstka. If by the end of 2022, 38 people were involved in criminal cases, now their number has reached 86 people. And let us continue with the topic of foreign agents. They are left without advertising, that is simply put without making money. The State Duma has passed a law on the complete prohibition of advertising on all information resources of foreign agents, as well as advertising of such resources. Violation of the prohibitions will be punishable by a fine of up to 50,000 rubles for individuals and up to 500,000 for legal entities. The law will affect any resources of foreign agents, websites, blogs, pages and social networks. Advertising of the resources of foreign agents themselves in the media will be prohibited. Foreign agents being abroad on all sorts of promotions, they get a huge financial opportunities. They are counted not in tens but in hundreds. Millions of rubles which they used to conduct anti-Russian activities. They are already on the payroll of Washington, of Brussels, of London. There are even those agents who are on the payroll of the, of the Ukrainian regime. So we see that they have a common goal, and their goal is the same, which is to destroy our country. Well, advertising agencies will prescribe conditions in their contracts that allow them to unilaterally terminate contracts with bloggers if they are recognized as foreign agents. This is reported by RBC with reference to sources in large advertising companies. And there is already the first reaction from bloggers of foreign agents. Journalist Ekaterina Gordeva announced the suspension of her YouTube channel due to the ban on advertising from foreign agents. Here's what she wrote in her Telegram channel, quote, It's hard to say what pisses off the authorities more, that we're not scared or that we're really no agents at all, no one's agents but our own conscience and profession. Now, advertising with us is a crime. It is hard to believe that someone would decide to commit it out of noble motives, risking business themselves, loved ones. In short, we are suspending operations. How will the new restrictions on the work of foreign agents affect the market of Russian language YouTube? Let's discuss with journalists and editor-in-chief of the publication Republic Dmitry Kolezev. Uh, Dmitry, hello. Hello, good afternoon, good evening. Yes, well, please tell me, so far it looks, uh, especially after Gordiva's statement, uh, just terrible, that is, there is no way out or there are some alternatives, I don't know. Well, I'm just going to fantasize a little so that uh, the audience understands what I mean. Well, for example, if a YouTube channel or any any other media resource that is used by a foreign agent is not formally owned by it, will it still count? I think so. Since they have banned advertising on any resources of foreign agents, well, I guess if you somehow formally organize it in such a way that it doesn't belong to a foreign agent, it belongs to someone else. But I think that the Russian court here will unambiguously side with those who want to punish foreign agents. Mm -hmm. So there's hardly any sense in such tricks. You know, if we were somewhere in a state of law where it would be possible to cling to a rule of law and uh, bypass some kind of restriction, then yes, here, well, God, the FIS or the court or the investigative committee, whoever is going to look into it, will say that we believe that these are the resources of a foreign agent, and that's it. But on the whole, the situation is, of course, bad. And it's a pity that it's primarily, you know, I would say projects like this, on YouTube, with a more neutral position, more moderate even. Uh, Katerina Gordiva, she's not a fierce oppositionist, a fighter against the regime, and a person who is trying to overthrow the government, right? She is a journalist who, as far as I understand, stays working in Russia, at least, well, she records part of her interviews in Russia, talks to people who are in Russia. Uh, naturally, they have to uh, abide by some of the censorship restrictions 
institutions that exist today, but nevertheless, it's talking to people who disagree with the current government, who are often sort of opposing themselves. Of course, this is content that the Russian authorities don't like very much. But these projects will be the first to be affected because they have an advertising model. They collect money mainly from their advertisers. This is an honest, good way of financing media. And the Russian authorities are taking away this way from independent media, from those that they have declared foreign agents. Here was aired before me this comment by Piskaryov. It is, of course, absolutely, uh, on the one hand, uh, absolutely illogical. On the other hand, it shows the very essence of the law on foreign agents very well. Because what does Piskaryov say? He says, look, Foreign agents are on the payroll of Brussels and Washington. They advertise Russian legal entities and conduct anti-Russian activities, so we're going to ban them from advertising. A question of logic. If foreign agents are in the good graces of Brussels and Washington, why do they need to advertise Russian legal entities? They're already on the dole. And if they are surviving at the expense of this advertising and not at the expense of Brussels and Washington, why did you declare them foreign agents? I don't understand. This is the whole point of this law, as it were, in this contradiction. Um, it is not about any foreign influence, of course. It's just to shut their mouths, to make life as difficult as possible for those who somehow deviate from the general line of the Kremlin, from the general line of the party, even a little bit. Yes, you don't have to be some kind of oppositionist. Alexei Pivovarov, the channel editorial, will also suffer greatly from this because he was declared a foreign agent, he sells a lot of advertising, he does a lot of neutral journalism, he tries not to give any unambiguous assessments for which he is criticized a lot. But now, it turns out he will also fall under this law. To be honest, as far as I have looked at the amounts that bloggers earn from advertising, well, not only foreign agents, there are major Russian bloggers, Alexei Pivovarov, and his entire editorial staff, of course, it is not just one person. So much content in such volume and quality cannot be done by one person. It must be understood that he maintains a huge editorial staff, I am sure. And I just wanted to say that he seems to be almost the only one who falls under Piskarev's definition of hundreds of millions of rubles. He has advertising revenue, I'm not 100% sure. I think it was Forbes data, 130 million. Everyone else is below that amount, even Dud. Uh, listen, I remember that this figure, 133 million, I think it's, I don't have it in front of me right now, but I think it was the figure for all foreign agents for the year 2023, whether it was 200 million or 130 million. Somehow it was called that, that's what was officially advertised and what was registered by the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service. Anyway, it sounds like some kind of like kind of a big sum for the average person, but if you divide it by all the projects, you realize that these projects have a lot of videos coming out, several videos a week sometimes, and it's clear that the advertising integration alone costs some astronomical amount of money. In any case, compared to the fantastic budgets that Russian propaganda and Russian state television has, it has these budgets. I remind you, from the money of Russian taxpayers, yes, it doesn't make money mainly from advertising. Well, it makes money from advertising too, yes, but in general it's kind of dated, it's subsidized by the state. There are a certain number of people on YouTube who make talented, good content. Even in the present conditions, being declared foreign agents and under all the repressions and depressions, they manage to sell advertising and this last opportunity to earn an honest living in Russia is being taken away from them. And then they wonder, why we have independent media getting money in the West. You cut off all opportunities for them to make money in Russia. And where, excuse me, do they get the money now? How do they live and how do they fulfill their professional duty? After all, people are working, performing an important public function. Let's remember that. Uh, first of all, we are talking about independent journalists. Yes, and as we remember, uh, of course, the title of foreign agent, it is not discriminatory. It should have been according to the law. And if we continue to parse Piskarev's logic, uh, he says that some foreign agents work directly, you know, for Ukrainian money or Ukrainian interests. I would also like to remind Piskarev that if you are ready to prove it, then you have a criminal 
seminal article for such things, so why do you still directly, in order not to prove anything, just all in one fell swoop, of course, he does not mention any names and surnames in such speeches, of course. But please tell me, Dmitri, is there any way out, conditionally, it would probably be great if some political force, for example, turned to Google and said, all foreign agents in YouTube can be allowed to monetize Russia, probably, partially, at least it would compensate, but I understand that this scenario is impossible. Look, I was also thinking about this today. You know, the problem with monetization is that it could be included even not only for foreign agents, for example. It could be included for all Russian YouTubers. But Google today, as far as I understand, can't sell advertising in Russia because it can't operate there. Well, this is an area where simply the corporation does not want to work. There are risks for them there. We remember that there were precedents there of pressure from the Russian state on Google managers. They made a reasonable decision to simply not operate uh, in that jurisdiction, so it may even be possible to enable monetization. The question is what kind of advertising you will show to viewers on YouTube who will buy this advertising, how to sell it if you can't operate in Russia. It is probably also possible to come up with a scheme. It seems to me that there must be some really political pressure put on Google here because it is unlikely that this is something they will want to do. The ways out of this situation, well, first of all, we must say that it is not a total disaster because if we look at the top 20, for example, YouTube channels of Russian language, social and political channels which are available on YouTube today, they still place advertising there and even more so live only at the expense of advertising, probably a minority of them today. Therefore, of course, not everyone will be affected, but some will be partially affected. Mm. I, for example, on my YouTube channel, 40% of the revenue is advertising. Now we have to replace these lost revenues with something. But what are the options? Either look for some kind of funding from some donors, grantors, sponsors or something else. Or, and I think this is the best option, is trying to, to get more donations and more donations from your viewers. And of course, I think a lot of projects now will try to do that. But you have to realize that, so to speak, the market, the possibilities of uh, people who support independent media, they are not unlimited either. Uh, it's some finite number of people. They're already spending. Many of them are already subscribed to donations on those, um, on others, on third parties, because they think it's important. And if now another 20 or 30 projects come in there and say, and now we can't survive without donations, it's unlikely that just out of nowhere that money is going to come up to support everybody. So, well, it's a complicated situation. What can I say? The Duma, of course, is here. Well, and the Kremlin's been put up to it. In general, well, they've ruined the life of the Russian independent media. Well, in general, everyone was probably more or less morally prepared for this because we can see what is happening and where it was going. Yes, uh, but I asked for clarification. You and I, it was Commerçant, we were a little confused about the figures. I asked for clarification. 131 million rubles. Uh, this is indeed Alexei Pivovarov's income, but apparently that of his entire editorial staff as well. Here too, they sent me an unclarified statement that he had increased his income by 55%, which is the figure that Commerçant cited. It was the 23rd year. That's well, a lot, it's a lot. It? It's a lot. I'm surprised. Yes, and all the income, even duds, because first of all, they say that dud earns the most from it, they earn less. Yes, well, and probably the last thing I would like to discuss, Dimitri, there has been a lot of discussion about the monetization of Telegram. Maybe Pavel Durov is putting some of these things on purpose, no? Uh, I think that the announcement of this was probably not accidentally made today. I think it's, of course, Paul's desire to sort of be part of the agenda. So I'm not commenting directly on this law, but it kind of closes one door and perhaps opens another door for foreign agents, although we don't really understand how it will work. And by the way, there are advertisements in Telegram that are inserted into the user yeah. channels. Yes, I wonder how it will be for the channels of foreign agents. Will Telegram limit advertising there in some way and will the same foreign agents be able to receive this monetization from Telegram now? Probably yes, because we're talking about cryptocurrency payments. As we remember, Telegram is formally a non-Russian company and in fact a non-Russian company. Well, let's see. As practice shows, after all, Ну, поглядим, как показывает практика, все-таки нужно иметь достаточно 
It is necessary to have large enough platforms and popular channels to really have some numbers there to have the economics of such media projects to be substantial, but it will be, uh, it is a good step, I think, that is, in any case, a certain impetus for the development of Telegram channels and for the development of independent media in Telegram. It's a platform that continues to more or less work and continue to be at least mostly free of censorship. Yes, thank you, Dmitry. One door opens and another closes. It's good that it really is like that for everyone, not just Kirkorov, Dmitry Kolezev, journalist, blogger, editor-in-chief of the publication Republic, was on the air of the program Air. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. That way you not only thank the Kodokovsky live team that works for you, but also help YouTube realize that the video is important and needs to be shared. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't for some reason. That way we will become closer. The video was translated into English as part of an initiative to promote anti-war and Russian opposition videos to a global audience. Please support the initiative financially and by spreading our videos, give a like. We are working at our own expense. To continue doing this, we need your support. Join the initiative. The link with the support options and contacts is in the description. Thank you for watching.